You know, I've been struggling to get a thousand subscribers. I'm at 600 plus. I'm not sure, maybe six, close to 610. Need a thousand to be able to get monetized. <clears throat> but when my viewers look at my videos and they leave comments, I feel, it's almost like I feel obligated. Maybe I'm not obligated, but I feel like I need to respond to the comments and keep it on a personal level, you know? Uh, but I, some of my other friends have got upwards of 40,000 plus subscribers. Uh... And I was with them back when they only had like, that one of them actually had less than a thousand, and then there's others that had around a thousand. And I used to be on a real personal level with them, you know, corresponding back and forth but through emails and Facebook and all that stuff. And, and, um, but I've noticed that once they start really getting up there in high count on subscribers, they're more distant. I can't, I can't get responses out of them like I used to, and I can't talk to them like I used to. And that kind of bothers me. I understand when you got thousands and thousands, uh, where I've only got, I've got about 150 people that's loyal that watches my videos. And out of that 150 people, sometimes there's as many as, as uh, 40 comments. And I try to respond to each and every one of them. Some might get by me a time or two, but most time I see them. And I do respond, and I like, I like that one-on-one -on -one type uh, situation, you know. And I find myself, well, what if I get a thousand or more subscribers and I start getting more subscribers and then I start getting hundreds of comments? Uh, there ain't no way I can respond to all them comments. So I... I guess that's like a, I don't know, it's just, it's nice to have those subscribers where you can get monetized and earn some extra money and really, this is what I need, I need extra money that I don't have right now and the only way I can get it is through YouTube if I get, get monetized. Um. I don't know, it's just something I'm thinking about. Maybe I should quit worrying about it. Maybe when people leave comments, they don't... They don't expect to respond. I don't know. But it sure bothers me, you know. <clears throat> um, I don't know, just something on my mind, you know. <laughs> Maybe I don't need to be worried. I need to be worried about, you know, that's a funny shaped rock. Can you see that rock? It's a limestone rock. And I suppose when they was digging, digging the foundation stuff at this shopping center many years ago, that there's actually two rocks. There's one over there and here's one. Um, 
and sometimes they just they had these here to block people from driving through and which didn't stop them because somebody just cut a trail around that one I would imagine that's why they're there because the, the road ends right there. Matter of fact, there's the pavement in right there. So they knew if they didn't put something here, people would be driving through. And we do drive, cars don't, but motorcycles, bicycles, scooters, and stuff like that do. Anyhow, that's the skinny on my thoughts about getting uh, so many subscribers and, and comments and stuff that I can't respond to all of them. Mm, I guess that's the price of progress. Anyhow, uh, I'll see you in the next video. And that's my story, and I am sticking to it. GoPro, stop recording. Well, uh, the um, Mobility Express called me up a while ago and said he'll be out here in about four to five minutes to get me fixed up. So uh, he said, would that be all right? <laughs> I told him no. No, I didn't. <laughs> you know better than that. I told him yes, by all means. And I had, when I got home a while ago, I had, well, I can show you. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I had to go through the yard, and there's some little roots sticking up out of the ground over at the gate. And um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't pull over the roots. I had to push it. So, quick as I got in, though, I put it on the charger, so it's moving a little bit now. It, matter of fact, I can turn it on, you see. It goes all the way over to full charge. I don't know how long that will stay like that. But, anyhow, he's coming out. I wonder if he keeps the old batteries. I'd like to have the old batteries because you know you get, I think, about 20 cents a pound for them things. I'll ask him, but he probably keeps them. He probably salvages them things himself or sends them to whoever makes the batteries. I don't know. I'll ask him. It don't hurt to ask. Well, he's here. Uh, Maybe. You want to be on YouTube? No. No? Well, I ain't supposed to take pictures of kids I don't know anyway. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, what we're going to do is, right now I'm testing the batteries to see what their voltage is with no load on them. And then I'm going to put a load on them to see what the batteries go down to. So right now, they're sitting at 13.2. Is that good? That's about where they're supposed to be, you know, when they're when they're just sitting there. But the thing is, that's without anything drawn power from them. So, what I'm gonna do next? Yeah, a while ago, I decided, well, I'm gonna run down to Publix, and boy, I got down there, and but coming back, I was thinking I ain't gonna make it home. Yeah, you told me I had to push it, huh? And um, well, I it 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 got got real slow, mm -hmm. and it was running. Just running red. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this battery back here, use it as a prop, get the back end, rear end off the ground. Like this. See that? That way you can spin these wheels, put a load on the batteries without having to worry about the scooter moving. So, let's see what happens now. It'd probably help if I lose a hundred pounds. How much do you weigh? You don't you don't exceed the weight capacity on this. So I, I weigh 276. Yeah, this thing has a, what is this, a Victory Victory 9 or a Victory 10? Yeah, this has a 400 pound weight capacity. You'll be fine. For 
sure. How long what? were you in? I was thinking about going in for a couple of years. A lot of my friends are in. So. I, I was in for six years, and six. they were sending these guys left and right to Vietnam, and I decided I didn't want because my brother had already been over there, and he got wounded twice. And I said, you know, I just... I, I'm, I'm probably going to regret it, and I do regret it because I, I wanted to stay for 20, but I didn't want to go to Vietnam. I don't blame you. No one would, I don't think. All right, I'm going to take this on a little test drive. All righty. Give me a minute. I'll be back. Well, he's test driving it. And something's sure making it go down. He says the batteries is dropping. GoPro, stop recording. What's your charging schedule, you know, what's your regular routine for charging this thing? I, I plug it up at night. Yeah. And if I've used it, if I haven't used it, I don't plug it up. But I okay. plug it up at night and then I leave it overnight. Mm. And so you if you used it that day, you just plug it in that night. And then yeah. the next day, how do you usually do it in the morning? What, take it loose? Yeah. Uh, you, usually, if, uh, I, use it. I leave it till I start using it because I go out every day. Do you ever leave it for more than 24 hours at a time? Because I'm asking because they're not showing me any signs that they're really like dead bad. You know, they, the problem is that there's a condition sometimes they call where they have a, what's called a bad cell in the battery and it doesn't always show itself. You know, it doesn't happen all the time. It will be. Uh, you know, sometimes it'll show full, you go, you know, a mile, and then it just starts dying like real fast. Yeah. So I'm gonna replace them, even though it's not showing, you know, showing me signs that they're a little bit weak, but it's not showing me that they're dead, you know, that they're that they're really down there. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise, if it was, if they were really dead, you wouldn't even usually be able to go at all, you know, before it just, goes, you know, bottom bottoms out, you know, the voltage drops out and it starts giving you bat, you know, beeps that the, you have an error code. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, you know, I'm gonna take them and change them, Keep doing your schedule. That's the right schedule. Every night after you use it, um, don't let it on for more than 24 hours at a time on charge. Yeah. Uh, and if you're going to not be using it for more than a week or two, you want to make sure you charge it at least one night per week. You know, like that overnight thing. Yeah. Um, that's that. You've been on the right schedule. So if you keep that up, they should be good. You might have just had a bad batch of batteries, like I said, that has what you know one bad cell, and it only happens after you get about 20% into the charge. You know, or 15% or 30% after you you know you get into it, and then it just it just drops out. So. Yeah, I, I thought when it, the battery started going down, it would just lose a dot and then lose a dot and then lose a dot. But boy, when it... It just dropped out? I mean, yeah. it, it starts, it'll start with one, then it'll go lose two, and then it'll lose three, and next thing I know, it's down in the yellow, then it hits the red. When it hits the red, it just barely moves. And then sometimes, yeah, it'll just stop moving at that point. Yeah. All right, well, let me get to work here. It won't take too, too long. And we're planning on getting another vehicle to uh, a van. Oh, really? And we want that ramp that, ramp that comes picks out like it up that. and goes inside. Yeah, we can help you with that. Yeah, he, um, that they, they said they'd pop for it, so. Very good. Uh, yeah. I seen one the other day. It was a World War II vet lives down the road here. Really? And he's got the same scooter, but he's got a van. Okay. What's and it's name? inside the van. Uh, uh, Bob Wolf, I believe. Bob Wolf. Okay. He's 98. Wow, I was about to say, yeah, there aren't too many of them left around. No, you know? he's 98. And occasionally we ride that damn motorcycle, and he ain't got no business doing it, and he knows it. What? He rides a motorcycle at 98 he's, years He's old. got a three-wheeler, and he's got a two-wheeler. And he's got a, a scooter that he, a, a moped. Wow. And, uh, but I he's hope I'm lucky enough to be up in 98 riding on a motorcycle. I like Bob. He's, 
he's a World War II vet, and I met another. There's, there's several that go to the VA here in Ocala. Yeah. That they're up in their nineties. One come out of the Publix the other day. Yeah. And I seen his hat, and it is a World War II vet. Yeah. And I said, I'd sure like to talk to you a minute if you got time. And he had these two big bags. He what? He didn't bring his the cart out, pushing the stuff. He put them in bags, and he was toting them. Yeah, he's pulling with his yeah. He, out, yeah. out, you know, to the car. And he said, "Bleed off, we'll have you." I said, "Well, I'll catch you another day." Yeah. Because I like talking to them World War Two vets. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I didn't realize when I was a kid. You know, they used to have at school. You know, uh, the World War Two vets would come in. You know, yeah. Memorial Day or Veterans Day or whatever, and uh, they would tell stories. And when you're a kid, you don't realize kind of what that is. You know, how important that is. And you know, as you get older and you start to realize that you know they're <laughs> not going to be around so long. And yeah. You're not going to be able to share their experience and stuff like that. Um, you know, you gotta try to do it as much as you can while while you can. Yeah. I'm thinking so. He's a good guy. I I've heard some stuff, you know, from World War II vets. Uh, you know, working in this job. You know, just you know, doing the job, daily job of, in this industry. There's a lot of Vietnam vets around. Oh yeah, yeah. I heard. I yeah. That's probably the most I think that I deal with is uh, is from Vietnam, at this point. Starting to get some of the younger guys. You know. Some of the newer, uh, newer ones. But most of them, yeah, most of the, the vast majority is from uh, Vietnam. The lights on. That's the first time I ever noticed that thing had a light on the front. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, so this button is right here. Also, you had it pointed straight uh, up. I think or was it, it was straight down. So if you ever had it on, you wouldn't, no one would have seen it. You gotta have it straight out like that. That way when you turn it on, the car, if you're out at night, at least it's not for you to see so much as someone seeing you, you mm -hmm. know, on the side of the road or something. Yeah, I always do this thing here that I got a light. All right, well, I got the new batteries in. Charge it, you know, as soon as possible. You know, overnight would be good. Um, any other questions or concerns? You said the seat wasn't swiveling or something? No, every time I try to swivel it, it's like something was stopping it. Yeah. 